This video explores some interesting details of the paper, Teacher-Student Curriculum Learning. This paper looks for different ways to teach an LSTM to predict the output of adding numbers in the sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning framework and how to navigate a complex Minecraft maze by learning from less complex mazes. This paper provides an interesting reward signal to the teacher network. In the Minecraft maze, the teacher doesn't just receive a reward based on if the easier task it sends to train the student network improves the student network's performance on the most complex maze, rather it's looking to make improvements on each of these sub-tasks. This models algorithms like intrinsic motivation and open-ended exploration that explore more interesting ways of optimizing neural networks. This video will explore the experiments in the paper, such as maze navigation and sequence-to-sequence -sequence addition, as well as the four algorithms presented for selecting actions in spite of noisy reward signals from the student network, catastrophic forgetting of previously learned tasks, and also while simultaneously balancing exploration and exploitation. This video will explore a really interesting paper on curriculum learning, which is this idea of having a particular order in which a supervised learning model sees training data or in which reinforcement learning agents attempt different tasks. This paper experiments with nine digit addition modeled by a sequence to sequence LSTM and navigating Minecraft style mazes for the reinforcement learning setting. This research presents an interesting approach to reward the teacher when picking a curriculum for the student. Rather than solely modeling this on the final test objective, the teacher tries to find improvements in each of the available tasks for the student. This is motivated by continuing learning on tasks with positive learning curves and also mixing in tasks with negative learning curves to avoid forgetting. This video will explore some details in this paper as well as four algorithms presented to model noisy reward signals from the student network and balance exploration and exploitation for the teacher. The researchers present three interesting requirements for using curriculum learning on different problems in supervised learning and uh, reinforced learning. So in order to use curriculum learning, you have to be able to order the subtasks by difficulty. So in the two cases presented here, you first have the sequence to sequence uh, addition modeling problem. In that case, you order it by difficulty by saying that one digit addition like eight plus four is a lot easier than something like nine digit addition where you have these much larger numbers that you're adding together. Similarly, in the maze navigation task, you have some of these tasks where it's just a room and then it's basically just like two grid rolled steps to get to the objective compared to having uh, multiple rooms as well as things like lava in them and walls and different obstacles that make the uh, subtasks more difficult than other subtasks. The next uh, step is to decide on a mastery threshold. So this is having a certain level of achieving uh, skill on the easier task, in which case you move up to a more challenging task. And then the third is the challenge of continuously mixing in the easier tasks while learning the hard ones because neural networks have something called catastrophic forgetting where if you uh, say go up from one digit addition up to five digit addition, it's likely that it might have forgotten how to do two or three digit addition on the way of training the neural network. So you have to continuously mix in the easier tasks while also learning the hard tasks. The action space for the teacher network looks like an N-arm bandit problem where it's selecting the different levers that it wants to pull in order to send to the student and get back a reward signal. In this case, the reward signal is gonna be the student's improvement on the task that the teacher sent to it. So for example, if the teacher sends it two digit addition, the reward signal for the teacher is going to be based on how much the student improves on where it previously was at with two digit addition, rather than having it be measured on the final task of nine digit addition, which is the key difference between this paper and you know a lot of other common papers in curriculum learning. Similarly, you have the same idea with the different uh, sub mazes in order to do the more complicated uh, maze navigation. You see the difference between just walking forward to get to the goal compared to having to go through this wall avoid the lava to get through, and then finally make it to, or go in this way to get to the final goal. This chart depicts the heuristic that they're using for task sampling. The teacher network is making decisions about which task to send to the student network based on its expectation of how much the student will improve at each given task, not which task has the lowest or highest loss or some final objective metric. So in this case, you say you have the blue, green, and red tasks, and these plots are the uh, learning curves over the time steps of training. So at say time step uh, 1000, the green task has the highest slope. So even though the blue task has the highest loss and the red task has the lowest loss or whatever the final objective might be, you would choose to train on this uh, green task because of this, because it's exhibiting the most learning at that step. So the teacher is also balancing forgetting by selecting tasks with negative learning curves, which gets blended into the selection by taking the absolute value of these negative curves. In this way, this curriculum learning technique resembles artificial intelligence paradigms like intrinsic motivation and open-ended algorithms that seek to explore and optimize these networks in a way that isn't just solely focused on a single objective metric. The researchers describe this scenario of an ideal curriculum learning setting where there is no such thing as catastrophic forgetting or unlearning previous tasks. So at first the teacher would have no knowledge so it samples all the tasks uniformly 
and then naturally the student would probably start making progress on the easiest task first so the teacher would allocate more probability to it send the task to the student more then once that learning starts to saturate it goes on to task two and so on until it masters the most difficult task however in the real world setting the teacher network has to model noisy reward signals from the student network account for forgetting and a balanced exploration and exploitation with each of the tasks it's selecting between so the paper presents four algorithms for doing this titled as online naive window and sampling the online algorithm describes the simplest case where you just model the expectation of rewards from pulling different actions based on the exponentially weighted moving average. So the idea here is that you choose a task based on your current estimate of the rewards and then you use this epsilon greedy or Boltzmann policy. So the epsilon greedy or the Boltzmann policy is the way in which exploration is incorporated into this. Epsilon greedy basically says you take the uh, action that you have the maximum expectation of reward with probability epsilon and then with one minus epsilon you sample uniformly from the other task. The difference in the Boltzmann policy is that the sampling from the other tasks that aren't the max uh, expectation is done according to some kind of, it's almost like a soft max distribution of the other tasks. So it's not just uniformly random. So then the idea is that you get this reward signal based on the difference in the student's performance when you had previously selected that task. So you're not just uh, modeling the reward based on like how much it improves on the overall task to like to say it again. You're modeling it based on this difference in reward between when it previously had trained on that task that you just selected and then you just do the online algorithm describes updating the expectation this way by having this alpha parameter times the current reward and then adding that to the one minus alpha of the previous estimation of that action the naive algorithm extends the online algorithm to get a better integration of this idea of the learning curve slope so rather than just selecting the task in the teacher network and then having the student network train it on and train on it for one step and then going back to update the reward signal what this does is it's going to train on that task for k steps so then after you train these k steps you have sort of a time sequence of updating the reward signal with respect to each training step so you're going to train a linear regression model to model the uh, evolution of performance on that task and then use the coefficient from that linear regression from training on the k steps in order to have the updated reward signal or the expectation of return that the teacher has for selecting different tasks so the key difference here is that you're going to be running the task selected for k steps and then this arises at a natural sequence that gives you this better estimation of the learning curve slope. Next extension to this is the window algorithm. So in the naive algorithm, you selected the task uh, A sub T, the teacher selects a task, and then sends it to the student network to run K steps. But this could be a waste of computation because the student might not improve during those K steps, and it'll be kind of a waste of training it for K more times. Because remember that you're uh, cycling between different tasks. So you're going from say uh, two digit addition to seven digit, uh, three digit, five digit, some distribution like that as you train. So maybe as you do the three digit and then go to four digit, you've improved on the two digit for some reason because of the way the network is training. So the idea here is that when you have this uh, stack of the uh, rewards that you see in the time steps, you're not just gonna have like one, two, three, four, five, six is the time steps for doing that linear regression modeling that you would get if you just ran it for K steps. So rather in this case, you're recording the time step. And that time step could be uh, distributed from like one, eight, nine, uh, you know, like 15, 17, 32, something like that, and then you use that to model the linear regression. So it's a bit of a different way to get, uh, have a more efficient way of structuring the time steps and sort of training on different tasks as well. The last algorithm that the authors explore is the sampling algorithm. And this is useful as well because it doesn't require hyperparameter tuning to balance exploration. So in the previous algorithms, you had the epsilon greedy or the Boltzmann selection of which uh, action to take based on the expectation of reward. But this has a different way of doing this. Rather what you have is you have these uh, first in first out buffers, these stacks with each action and you know stacking on top of the rewards that you're getting as you're sampling the action and then training the student and getting this reward, the improvement on that task. So the idea here is that you're just kind of taking the argmax off the stack, looking at the different stacks for each of the tasks. So it's a simpler way of you know modeling the slope, not having like an explicit linear regression going on, but rather just looking at the different stacks and taking the uh, rewards off the top of it. So the first task we'll look at is the sequence to sequence addition with the LSTMs. This is a uh, image I made for the past video, which is learning to execute, looking at uh, modeling these Python programs, but it's a similar idea with the sequence to sequence addition. The idea here is that you have something like eight plus eight, and then that would go into the decoder and you would output 16. So these are the results from the one dimensional digit addition. So in this case, the length of both the digits are the same. So say nine plus nine, 16 plus 16, you know, something like that. So in this case, you see the performance benefit, the online ep with uh, epsilon greedy selection performed the best, and you see this contribution of the absolute value. 
So this, the difference between this and this is that in this case, you're using the absolute value of the learning curves so that you're sampling with the negative uh, slopes as well. So you're not just training on the tasks that have the highest gains. You're also uh, you know, training on the tasks that you're forgetting as you continue to train across the different tasks, the different uh, sets of digit configuration. So train on like the seven digit edition, then six digit, eight digit, and all of a sudden you might have this massive negative slope curve with the uh, three digit edition. So you would go and train on that some more by using the absolute value. So you see the performance of the different uh, algorithms mentioned like online, naive, uh, window, and then the sampling. So then you see this distribution over which actions are being selected as the training uh, goes on. So you see in the beginning of training, you're selecting mostly the one digit, the two digit, the uh, easiest kind of task. And then you see as you get farther into the uh, learning, you're sampling more from the uh, nine digit because in the uh, eight digit because you're making the most progress on these tasks now. So even though you might be better at one digit or two digit addition, it's all about the slope. It's all about the gains you're making when you're selecting different tasks. And that's how it chooses which task to select. They also explore Minecraft maze navigation, training these agents that have these convolutional neural networks to make uh, action selections like movements and turning left and right and doing this with optimizing them by proximal uh, policy optimization. And the teacher network is selecting the different mazes for the student network to go and train in. So it has these five different environments where you're just a uh, single room with a target, two rooms separated by lava, two rooms separated by wall, three rooms separated by lava and a wall in a random order, and then the four rooms, the hardest task, in which you, know, you might just try to optimize directly on this, which we'll see in the next plot uh, performs terribly. So as mentioned, this is the plot that shows the training. So this blue curve that just receives negative reward the whole time, this is when you just directly go after this hardest uh, maze and don't do any curriculum learning on maze navigation. You see that that doesn't work at all. So then the other comparison is doing uniform sampling where you're randomly uh, sampling between all of the maze configurations, each one with uh, equal probability. Then we see the uh, best performing one is the purple one, the window epsilon greedy, where you're doing that, uh, you know, the algorithm presented in the paper compared to the red, which is a manual curriculum where you manually step. So in these first uh, like 100,000 steps, you train on the easiest one, then you switch to the next one, then you switch to the next one and so on until you get to the final uh, maze. So it's interesting to see the performance gain achieved by doing this kind of uh, sampling the different mazes with respect to the gains achieved by sampling from them as described in the video. The authors also provided a lot of interesting videos showing their uh, robot, the reinforcement learning agent, navigating through these Minecraft mazes. It's definitely interesting to watch this happening. It's definitely a really cool uh, environment. You can see a GitHub repository that's linked in the description of this video as well that shows you how you can uh, do the Minecraft environment with a similar interface as the OpenAI gym. Thanks for watching this video presenting this paper, Teacher Student Curriculum Learning, an interesting way of looking at the n arm bandit selection where the teacher is looking at different tasks to present to the student network. This paper is interesting because it uh, structures the reward for the teacher network, not based on some overall uh, test objective, like just uh, the success of navigating the final most difficult maze, but rather is just looking for where it can make gains on each of the subtasks in order to uh, inform its selection on which task it wants to send to the student network. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.